Asia Minor. In 547 BC, the Lydian king Croesus besieged and captured the Persian city of Teria and Cappadocia and enslaved its inhabitants. The Persian king Cyrus the Great marched with his army against the Lydians. The Battle of Teria resulted in a stalemate, forcing the Lydians to retreat to their capital city of Sardis. When the Romans entered the capital Sardis in 133 BC, Lydia, as the other western parts of the Italic legacy, became part of the province of Asia, a very rich Roman province, worthy of a governor with the high rank of proconsul. The whole west of Asia Minor had Jewish colonies very early, and Christianity was also soon present there. Acts of the Apostles 1614-15 mentions the baptism of a merchant woman called Lydia from Theatera, known as Lydia of Theatera, in what had once been the satrapy of Lydia. Christianity spread rapidly during the 3rd century AD. Lit by the late afternoon sun, it's difficult to imagine that these bucolic fields around the small Turkish village of Sart ever looked any different than they do today. More than 2,000 years ago, however, Sart was called Sardis. And these were not farmers' fields, but the bustling capital city of the powerful kingdom of Lydia. Thanks to the collaborative efforts of the Harvard Art Museums, Cornell University, and the Turkish Ministry of Culture and Tourism, our international team of archaeologists has been working for over 60 years to uncover Sardis's complex 4,000-year history. A lot of our work involves digging, but digging alone isn't enough. It would take us as many centuries to completely excavate the site as it took Mother Nature to bury it. So we're always looking for new tools to help us interpret Sardis's past. In the last few years, one tool that we've come to rely on is drone photography, which offers countless new ways for us to explore the ancient city from above. At the top of Sardis's imposing Acropolis, for example, the remains of the medieval citadel walls cling precariously to the hillside. What you see here are bits of those remains. Earthquakes and erosion have gradually worn the walls away, leaving behind isolated towers and doors that lead nowhere. Originally, though, these fragments would have been part of a solid fortification designed to defend the Acropolis from attack, with bastions constructed almost entirely from reused blocks that were taken from abandoned buildings in the city below. The rugged cliffs make conventional survey methods impossible, so we've used the drone instead. By flying the drone around the ruins and photographing them from different angles, we're able to produce interactive 3D models like this one that we can use to study the otherwise inaccessible walls in great detail. The process has also allowed us to identify parts of the cliffs that have fallen away, to map out where now missing sections of the wall once stood, and to recognize areas that are in danger of falling in the future. Aerial photography has opened up a part of Sardis we previously could not reach.